The word for heart is lave, beginning with a lamed. And the first mention of any word in the Bible is of great importance. And the word for heart is no exception. And surprisingly, the first mention is on a very negative note. And it's found in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And it speaks about the thoughts of the fallen heart of man being evil continuously. And we read at the bottom here, Machshavot libo rak ra kol hayom. The thoughts of his heart, that's man's heart, were evil every day, kol hayom, every day, continuously. There's the word we're interested in, libo. See the lamed? That's his heart. Now, I can't recall anything else in scripture which is described as continuously evil, kol hayom, every day. And this striking phrase underlines our desperate need for a saviour. But here's the thing. The good news is that as soon as the heart of man is mentioned, the evil heart of man is mentioned, the heart of God is mentioned. And the ne in, the, in the very next verse, and it says this, and the Lord reconsidered having made man on earth, and he had heartfelt sadness. And we read at the top here, for yet at save el libo. There's the word again, libo. There's the lamed, his heart. This time it's the Lord's heart. And his heart is the yet at save, which means, and he was grieved. His heart was grieved. He was sad because of the wickedness of man's heart. Now, isn't that an amazing thing? The lesson is that God responds to the heart of man. He can be grieved. He can be blessed. He can be pleased. Hallelujah. The God of the Bible is no heartless potentate or unfeeling great architecture, architect in the sky. He's merciful. He's gracious. He's long suffering. He's abundant in goodness and truth. Exodus 34, 6. He's not willing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9. It was God, it is said, who disallowed the angels to rejoice after the Israelites escaped from Egypt because many Egyptians had perished in the Red Sea, apparently without hope. You know, God really cares. God has got a heart. He's a father. He's not a scientist. He's a father. He's a great scientist too, but he's a father. He's our father. So you see, the Bible makes this connection between the heart of the Lord and the heart of man. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And in case we miss the point, the same formula is repeated when man's heart is mentioned for the second time. And the response from God is even more amazing. Genesis chapter 8 verse 21, the Lord vows in his heart that he will never again curse the ground because of man. And here it is, look, look at this here. The Yomir Adonai El Libo. And the Lord, that's the Lord's name. Look, isn't that beautiful? yud hey vav hey. The Lord said, and he said to his heart, Libo. And there is the Lord's heart. There's the Lamed and there's the word his heart. The Lord said to his heart, and the verse goes on to say, he says this, I will not continue to curse again the ground because of man, since the imagery or imagination of his heart is evil from his youth. And so we've got God's heart already mentioned, and now we've got Lave Ha'adam. Lave Ha'adam, that's the heart of man. Lave Ha'adam Ra Minurav is evil from his youth. But there's the heart of man. See, lave there. See the lamed? That's man's heart. So we've just had God's heart mentioned, and now we've got man's heart mentioned. You see, there is an interrelationship between the heart of man and the heart of God. It's good to know we're not alone in the universe and that the only reason that we tiny creatures can be happy and sad and disappointed and pleased is because our creator made us in his image he's not less than us he's immeasurably more he has feelings hallelujah but what's so amazing about this verse actually is that god actually makes allowance for the desperate wickedness of man's heart now i would have thought that the natural thing to say would have been i will curse the ground because of man's evil heart 
But instead, God says, I will not curse the ground because of man's evil heart. The infinite love of God's heart is responding to the lostness of man's heart. Trust God. He always finds a way. The world is a great place to be because it's his world. It always shall be. True to his word, God never again cursed the earth into oblivion. Had he done so, he would not have needed to send his son to die on the cross. But because he spared man and his world, the curse of the unpaid debt of man's sin remained to be settled. The universe was in the red, so to speak, and it was at Calvary that the curse was made to fall on the crucified form of the Saviour, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Everyone who hangs on a tree is cursed. Deuteronomy 21 verse 23. To those who repent and believe in Jesus Christ, the arrears incurred by their personal sins was settled in full for all time at the cross. The curse is lifted from us. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it's written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Galatians 3.13 and what of the first mention of heart in the New Testament? Where can it be found? Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 and it's typically bright and it's the words of Jesus himself. He said this, Blessed or happy are the pure in heart for they shall see God. In the heart, the lave, that is where God's best miracles occur and that is God's ultimate target in the believer's life. I might add that in order to reach the heart, God may have to break it. He allows life to do this for us. But a right response to the pains of life will ignite the flame of love in my heart. Or to change the metaphor, when my heart is broken, this fragrance fills the house and I step into a higher dimension. There was an unknown, unnamed woman in Bethany who did exactly this. Listen to these words from Matthew 26, verse 6. When Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. When his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor all with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial for her. This unnamed woman had a heart aflame with the love of Jesus and the truth. And this love became prophetic because it found access into a higher realm. Learn as much as you can and pray that it reaches your lave, your heart.